Well, hello again, YouTube. It's Petey Two Finger, and I was—I had made a video the other day. I was kind of—I was frustrated because I had worked for about a week on this VSTi synthesizer computer build. I built—I built a computer. It had the uh, cooling tower was all wobbling around in there, and I had to figure out how to remount that. Didn't have any hard drives, and the video card was blown and I needed to replace the thermal. So I went through that process, then I installed the operating system, dug out this ancient, uh, really cool sound card, found the drivers for Windows 7 64-bit for it, got that working, installed all the soft sense that I want and uh, different programs for uh, bass uh, emulation, bass amp emulation and some guitar stuff. And I'm going through, I'm checking out the synthesizers that I installed with this uh, MIDI controller that I had bought at Salvation Army that I had used on um, three or four albums. And it just stopped working. Now this MIDI controller is giving me so much grief. I Every year I'm, I'm looking up Win 7 64-bit driver and like playing around with it. And, um, as a matter of fact, I think I had another one where the uh, USB MIDI was all blown out in it, like it physically had been removed and shorted, and maybe I threw that keyboard out and then found another one and bought it. Because I swear I remember that, and then this one, the, the USB MIDI was fine. I ended up plugging it in, and it ding ding, it recognized, and then uh, like it uh, it worked, and then it was going to install it, and then it, uh, no, there's no driver for it. So, uh, I, it's very frustrating that companies make this stuff, and then they, they're just like, we're not going to support that anymore. You know, we put all this plastic out there in the world, but we want you to buy the new version of it. All they need to do is have somebody write the driver, and I... I don't know why there aren't um, like open source guys or hackers or people who know how to write code who just can't figure out how to write these drivers and just upload them to the forum. I mean, could it be that hard, you know, to write a MIDI keyboard driver for like if you have the existing one that worked for Windows XP to adapt it to Win10? I don't know. I don't know. I guess it is. So yeah, I was kind of bumming about that, and uh, I was like, well, we're just going to use either this uh, Yamaha synthesizer or my Kawaii K11, which is really nice. And, like, I'm saving that Kawaii K11 for something. <laughs> I don't know what, but... So today I had a doctor's appointment, and afterwards we... Uh, my wife came with me, which thank you for coming. We, uh, we hit this Goodwill that I've had some good luck at this one. Now there was a younger girl in there who was kind of annoying. She was like asking this guy about a power supply and she couldn't figure it out. And I was like, you know, I can help you with that. And she's like, no, I want to get someone who works here. And I said, well, to be honest with you, I'm the, like you couldn't have found a person who knows more about this stuff than me. And I'm here buying keyboards today too. And I've got a power of pile of power supplies right here. So I'm going to just insist that I help you. <laughs> so I got her all hooked up. Then there was an old woman. Uh, I don't know what nationality she was. She wasn't white. She looked like kind of like Yoko. She had like a, like like maybe Polynesian. She had like a style though. She had like a like a cool cap like a leather purse with zippers on it and all of her clothes didn't match but they matched very like fall colors she was great and she was playing around with a kindle she had found a power supply it was a weird plug she had two power supplies plugged into the thing and uh she was all frustrated the the battery was dead in the kindle and um uh, so I help those couple of people out, and which I do from time to time. I, I love helping people in Goodwill. If I can find somebody that's in there that's got a question about uh, power supply, then I can try to educate them a little bit about milliamps and polarity. Uh, usually those people, like today, the girl, I just kept having to explain it over and over. Like, she did not get 
You know, when I finally I showed her, I was like, this this picture on this thing is showing you the polarity, and that's this, the end of the cable, the pigtail, that's, this is a picture of that. And then, oh, then the lights went off. After I had explained it to her literally like six times. Like, the center is hot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is what I got today. A 49 key M audio controller for 10 bucks. And I got a really nice power supply. This this one has the, um, now some of the newer, smaller MIDI controllers will just have two buttons, and I really don't like that. I like to have the, um, what is it called? Pitch bend wheel and modulation wheel. So yeah, uh, I just opened this up, got all knocked all the dust bunnies out of it, and uh, sprayed down all of the keys with class cleaner. So it feels nice. Um, I really like the way that these uh, keys feel. They they feel. They feel good to me. Now, I I can't believe that they're, they would be any different than the Oxygen 61. Or, I mean, what I would think is that they would be worse. You know, that this is a newer model, and as time went on, M Audio figured out a way to make them um, for less money, and that would mean that it would have not as good of a feel but it it doesn't it feels good when you play it it was 10 bucks i got a power supply with it the power supply has pigtail on both ends which means there's a long ac cable that comes off of it that plugs into the wall um, it's a 12 volt one amp power supply that i ensconced to the unit, I wrapped it around here. We, we didn't pay for that, uh, but there was no price tag on that power supply anyway. So, yeah, ten bucks for this MIDI controller, which it's not sixty-one keys like the other one, but I won't miss them. I won't miss them. This is nice. It's actually a little bit more reasonable size. So I got to strip that other keyboard. I'll probably pull the boards out of it. I mean, the USB MIDI, I, if I can use a, a real MIDI uh, plug and not, bypass, uh, not play around with the USB MIDI style, oh, I'll do that every day. I will do that. Now, if it's one of my smaller keyboards that I'm going to plug in and I'm just going to audition some sounds or try out a new soft synth, I like to use the USB MIDI. I do. But if I'm going to be uh, performing or recording, I'll use a regular MIDI cable. My card, the, the computer, SoftSense computer has a built-in, uh, the card, sound card, has a breakout MIDI cable. So why not, right? So yeah, this is going to work perfectly. It's like the right size because um, it's a little smaller. So it won't get in the way so much. I can set it up and leave it up set up through the entire uh, tracking. Speaking of tracking, they had these headphones which uh, have a ridiculous 6 meter or 20 foot cable. There's a volume control here. Now these are not the best. They're Philips SHP 2500. They were $4.99, which is not really a deal for this. This is all this is worth, but they're not blown. Um, you know, uh, when I when I track when I record all the guitars and basses, uh, I'll wear this. And the reason being is they take a lot of wear and tear. <laughs> I sweat a lot. These get knocked around. I step on the cable and they get pulled. And I mean, I am really hard on tracking headphones so typically when I'm planning on recording an album I like to buy a set of headphones that's in that mid-range of quality where I'm not going to be upset if I break them 
meaning, okay, yeah, they were five bucks, and that's all that they were worth. I mean, if I get a pair of five dollar headphones and they're worth a hundred dollars or they sound incredible, I'm not going to want to use them for tracking because I know that that my tracking headphones get beat up. So uh, while these may uh, on the box they're marketed for um, like television that's why the cord is so long like these are for TV uh, I'm in the reviews a lot of people said that these are like the best headphones they ever found for music and I'm guessing that those people are just they're more experienced with consumer headphones I can't imagine if you put them up against some super luxe headphones that these would be superior but I've I my preliminary testing sound uh, I what I heard was a exaggerated bass and a good crisp high. So I don't look for flat headphones. Um, what I look for in uh, tracking headphones is uh, comfort and uh, are they. Uh, reasonably uh, sturdy. Tracking headphones means these headphones are going to be worn when I'm recording. They're going to get soaking wet. I'm going to step on them. I'm going to break them and I'm not going to care because they don't sound that great and I'm going to be using uh, some really nice set of headphones to get closer to the final mix then taking those head, really nice headphones off and using studio monitors and various other speakers. You know, I, I, I'll put a, a thumb drive, I'll put the song on the thumb drive and take it out and listen to it in the car. And typically, typically when I can get to where it sounds pretty good on, or I should say really good, on uh, the car, it's just a set of bookshelf speakers, a set of headphones and a set of computer speakers and also a mono mix doing it on just a singular M Audio BX5 studio monitor then I'm, I know it's it's in the bag all right you guys I just wanted to show you uh, what I scored at Goodwill today oftentimes it'll be like just what I need is there you know like they say the Lord provides well the Lord provides. And I was really thrilled about finding this MIDI keyboard today. Yeah, it was 10 bucks. I mean, I would have been really happy if it was 5 but no. At least it wasn't 15 Alright, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe.